Jeb Bush uh, spoke about foreign policy at the debate last night, and he admitted that the military industrial complex is a thing. Now, he's not going to use, you know, that specific terminology, but pay attention at the end here, and you'll see what he's getting at. He mentions, uh, this is tied into the economy. So let's listen, then we'll break it down. Governor Bush, what is the biggest threat facing America today? It is, I'd say it is Islamic terrorism. And back to the question of what we are dealing with in Iraq, when we pull back, voids are filled. That's the lesson of history. And sadly, this president does not believe in American leadership. He does not believe it. And the net result is that we have a caliphate the size of Indiana uh, that gains energy each and every day to recruit Americans in our, in our own country. And the threat to the homeland relates to the fact that we've not dealt with this threat of terror in the Middle East. We should have a no-fly zone in Syria. We should have a support for the remnants of the Syrian Free Army and create safe zones. If you want to deal with the four million refugees that are, that are leaving Syria because of, because of the devastation there, then we ought to create safe zones for them to stay in the region rather than go to Europe. And that requires American leadership. Without American leadership, every other country in the, in the neighborhood begins to change their priorities. It, it is tragic that you see Iraq and other countries now talking to Russia. It wasn't that long ago Russia had no influence in the region at all. And so the United States needs to lead across the board. This president and Hillary Clinton both do not believe that the United States has a leadership role to play and we're now paying a price and it will have a huge impact on the economy of this country if we don't deal with this. It will have a huge impact on the economy of this country if we don't deal with it. Okay, he's admitting there that Warfare is our welfare. So we have defense contractors in all the 50 states, different plants everywhere. And of course, we have no-bid contracts coming from Washington to Raytheon and Boeing and Halliburton and Honeywell and all these different corporations. And they have to make tanks and Kevlar vests and uh, vehicles and anti-aircraft missiles and a trillion different things. And this helps the economy go round and round and round and round. And this is exactly what Dwight Eisenhower warned against in his farewell speech. That you can't fall into the trap of war for profit. You can't fall into the trap of relying on this to be your economic engine, because then what's going to happen? Naturally, you're just going to look for places to intervene. You're going to look for different regimes to arm. And the end result is you're going to fight needless wars. People are going to die. Uh, and you're going to arm horrific regimes, like, for example, Saudi frickin' Arabia, who we're arming right now as they massacre civilians in Yemen. So, but he's admitting it, that's the amazing thing, is that when the Republicans are in their bubble and they let it all hang out like they do at a Republican debate, they say shit like that. Like, yeah, no, for the economy we need to do war. Oh my god, what a perverse incentive. You've now set it up so that it, it, there's a benefit to you if you fight wars. So then you're not going to fight wars only when it's a matter of necessity and for self-defense. This is exactly what Smedley Butler warned about when he said war is a racket, and he goes on to describe, you know, you're basically fighting for the corporatocracy and for people to get rich here. And that's not a conspiratorial thing. I know it sounds like it, but follow the money and look at what's happening. It's obvious at this point, and he's even saying it. He's admitting it. All right, so you have that aspect of it, and this shows you also he's a puppet of the corporations, as we knew. That's why he's in the Bush family, and they know they trust this guy, which is why they dumped a tremendous amount of money into his campaign from the beginning. Uh, so let's address some of his other points here. He says, well, Iraq, look at Iraq. We need to learn a lesson from that. When we pull back, voids are filled. So that's the lesson he took away. Why do we pull back? No, Jeb, the lesson you should have taken away was, why do we go in in the first place? If we didn't go in in the first place, we would have never destabilized the region, and you couldn't have had ISIS rise out of the situation. Now, some people say, well, that's not fair to say that because maybe they would have came about anyway. But we, we can trace exactly how ISIS came about today. And the biggest reason for their success in terms of territorial gains, it's because Saddam's former Ba'athist generals teamed up with them. And when they did that, they were able to be successful and get all this different territory. 
If you never had Saddam's Ba'athist generals team up with them, they could have never gotten all that territory. Why? Because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't know how to win literal military victories. They're a bunch of religious lunatics in the middle of the desert. They need the experts to help them. And the experts would have never fucking helped them if you didn't throw out Saddam's regime, de the government, and turn the country over to the Shiites and Maliki. These are the, I know it's, it gets annoying and we're getting into the weeds, but these are the details that are so important which show you that the Republicans have no clue what the fuck they're doing and they want to micromanage everything and they just always fuck everything up when they do that. So your lesson should be, uh, my brother shouldn't have done that ridiculous, over-the-top, dumb neocon war. But no, your takeaway is we should have stayed in there longer. How long, big guy? You want to stay there forever? Don't answer that because I know the answer might be yes. Uh, and then he says, Obama doesn't believe in America as a leader. Even though he said in his last State of the Union, the question isn't if America's going to lead, it's how America's going to lead. And Obama, to, in my opinion, unfortunately, still believes in a soft version of imperialism. So not the neocon shoot em up, go in everywhere with ground armies, invade nonsense. He says, no, 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 just drone strikes here and there, airstrikes here and there, maybe one invasion or two. And that's supposed to be like, oh, liberal! But see, the point is, he still clearly believes in America as a leader and being the world police, which is why we're involved militarily in seven different countries right now. How many do you want, big guy? You want to be in 12 different countries? God, it's so they view our soldiers as fucking pawns. You know, oh, I'd send the peasants out there to do our dirty work for the corporations. What a gross person, man. And they think they're patriots. You're not patriots. You hate our country and you hate the fucking troops. Look at how you treat them. And finally, he says, we need a no-fly zone in Syria because that would immediately escalate further into Cold War 2.0 with Russia and possibly down the line World War III. But please, don't let facts and intelligence get in the way of, you've been Mr. Tough Guy, oh, I'm against Russia, no-fly zone, even though they're fucking bombing ISIS. Why would you want to stop them from bombing ISIS? Are you on the side of ISIS? Which leads to the final point. Support the Syrian rebels, he says. There's like eight free Syrian army guys left in Syria. Those are the people who are the moderate Sunni rebels. Okay, uh, you know who's remaining there on fighting on the side of the rebels? Islamists, jihadists, al-Nusra, which is the al-Qaeda branch in Syria, and ISIS. So all radical jihadis. And Bush is like, we gotta support those guys. Why? Again, he wants to get involved in a civil war in Syria the same way his brother got involved in a civil war in Iraq. How did that work out? Bush, you're done, man. You know, he's at 1% he's pulling at. <laughs> Stop embarrassing yourself. Your ideas are just as bad as your poll numbers.